With a new year comes a fresh start. A time to create something new. Where'd I get this idea, I wonder? Well, this dome isn't being attacked by aliens anytime soon, so let's plant a lush forest garden and perhaps build a charming low poly house within it. I feel something is missing from the table. Let's liven it up with a simple racetrack. And not just any racetrack. Maybe we want to be able to adjust it on the fly for quick prototypes and see how they look. To have smooth, sweeping corners, and perhaps importantly, to not be flying in mid-air. Maybe want to add some flair, such as objects placed around the track like lampposts, and be able to adjust the distribution of them. And before you know it, we've made a procedural track creator. Before you create your own track generator, I find it's important to make sure the scene looks appealing by using an HDRI background. The basic floor will also help to ground the perspective of our working environment and give it a sense of depth. To make our simple track generator, we will use Godot's Path 3D node, which exposes built-in tools for managing splines. If you're not sure why splines are awesome, I've left some links in the description to people far more qualified than I to explain them. But for now, just know this lets you easily define a path in 3D space. A new set of buttons will appear at the top when the Path 3D node is selected, with the green allowing you to add points in the editor by clicking, the blue button allows you to move an existing point, or while holding shift, adjust the curve handles of each point to smooth out corners, the red button allows you to delete points, and the last button joins the path's ends, which is useful for us when defining a looped racetrack. Next we add a CSG polygon node. This node allows you to define a 2D shape, which will then be extruded a specified amount to quickly generate custom geometry for you. This is a technique I've leveraged before to build a tool that quickly prototypes simple land masses. The coordinates of the 2D shape can be seen under the Polygon section in the inspector, and set manually as required. Then we change the mode to Path, and select our previously defined Path 3D node, telling the mesh this is the path it needs to follow. Godot assumes a low amount of geometry is required out of the box, probably to ensure performance. But as we have a nice smooth path, we want our geometry to match it a bit better than this, which can be controlled by altering the path interval. I find 0.1 is usually a good compromise. And as we want our path to be connected, select the Path Joined option on the CSG Polygon node. If the join still looks wrong, it usually just means you need to correct the Path 3D node again. Generally, this just means deleting and re-adding the last point, then hitting the Path 3D Join button again at the top. Last time I checked, racetracks weren't square. So back in the CSG Polygon node, I adjust the polygon shape to be more similar to a road. As roads tend to have pavements or edges, I can use a second CSG polygon and pass it the same settings as the first, matching its shape and path. I then can tweak this node's polygon to extrude an edge upwards relative to the orientation of the road to create our edge. I'll quickly complete this process again for the inner edge, and give these nodes some useful names before adding a material. By default, the top half of the material is stretched along the entire length of the extruded shape. However, you will need to tweak the UV scale to get your texture to look right. Currently in Godot 4, the default sampling setting is Linear Mipmap, which tends to result in low quality normals, so make sure to tweak the sampling setting to your liking when working through the material settings. And already we have the basics of a usable tool for creating a racetrack that is still able to be modified procedurally in the editor, and that might be enough for your needs, but say we want to be able to spawn arbitrary objects that also follow the track. To do that, we need to jump into code. We want our script to run in the editor for testing, so firstly ensure we use the tool decorator at the start of the script, though you may need to reload the scene for this to take effect. Then we use the export range decorator to give ourselves a slider control that will show up in the inspector when selecting this node. We want this to update the amount of items spawned every time it changes, so we can use the setGet syntax below to call the spawn item function. The spawn item function itself first reads the list of detailed points and up vectors defined by our curve and stores them for use later. Then we'll remove any previously spawned objects which will be held in a child node that we will create called spawn. For this example I've just roughed together a function that creates a list of percentages along the path we want to spawn each item. Then we iterate over this list and can calculate the correct index for our detailed points list which will define the location to spawn each item. We generate a node to hold our item and move it to the spawn location, rotating it to face the next point in the list, then add our item as a child and translate it on the x-axis, perpendicular to the direction of its holder. And that's basically it. We now have all we need to build a racetrack and spawn items around it procedurally. 
What you choose to do with this knowledge is up to you. For example, creating offsets to control the distribution of objects on each side is shown here. Or you could iterate each point in the curve and use a raycast to snap the road to any objects beneath it. A game engine shouldn't be seen as something that does everything for you, but rather a tool that allows you to do anything with it. It should be noted this method has some performance implications at scale, so I would suggest once you're happy with the final prototype, you bake any meshes to be static. But for the purposes of creating quick and simple prototypes, I find this is far more approachable than working with the Surface tool, which can quickly become confusing. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I look forward to your feedback in the comments. Thanks.